он живет и работает в Берлине, он является одним из создателей а, открытого кода Open Frameworks. А, это очень важный элемент а, современной культуры. И а, об этом, и о других технологиях а, информационных, а, которые связаны с современным искусством, Артур сегодня расскажет в своей лекции. И, собственно, я его приглашаю для этого сюда. Yeah, thanks, uh, Natalia. Um, yeah. yeah, so my name is uh, Arturo Castro. Uh, I, I, come from, I come from Berlin. I'm based in Berlin right now, but I'm from Spain. Um, and yeah, as Natalia uh, said, I think uh, I'm an artist, uh, an engineer. Uh, I also work as an educator, uh, doing workshops like the one that, that we are doing here. Um, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about the work that I've been uh, doing during the last, during the last uh, 10, 12 years uh, in the field of uh, interactive installations, uh, art with uh, technology. Um, so, it's from 2006, uh, it was really, uh, it's kind, kind of nothing really special today, because there's like so many um, uh, video mapping uh, projects uh, out there, and back then it was kind of something not so so seen or so common and it was uh, a project in Perugia in Italy. Uh, Perugia is this city in Italy that has a really a special place because it's uh, they have kind of this uh, underground city so below the, the the real city they have this like 2000 year old uh, city uh, no, nobody lives there anymore of course but there's uh, kind of cultural places, uh, shops and we did this, uh, this project that uh, consisted of uh, a model of the city, that's, that's like the, the real city, the one that is uh, over the ground. And uh, on top of that, we were projecting images taken from, from maps, from archives, uh, of how the city was during, the, during different years. So through projection, we could uh, show how the, the city evolved. Uh, it was kind of primitive, the way that we were working, because uh, back then we didn't knew very well how to do this, so we were like, here you see uh, Matteo Ferroni, that is the guy who I work with in this project, and he was there like painting with Photoshop, one of the buildings that we wanted to, to show, like that one in blue. Sorry for the bad quality of these images, the rest of them will be there. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of one of the oldest projects I've worked in. So yeah, we were like painting them by hand, and and yeah. So uh, there was a camera, and and the uh, the installation was uh, interactive. You can like activate some things when when uh, passing your hand or it. We also didn't knew very well about these kind of techniques about computer vision. So we were doing things kind of uh, in weird ways, like trying to know how the light in the room will change to detect the, to see how the camera should behave, etc. And, yeah. Um, the next project um, is uh, Grand Multiple Smiles. This is a project I worked with. Uh, um, he actually had the idea for the project and I collaborated with him. And um, the idea was based on um, in Bhutan, in this um, ASEAN country. Uh, the president of Bhutan, uh, at some point um, during the 80s, I, I, if I remember well, uh, he was kind of questioned by Western journalists about why, because uh, they had politics in which they weren't allowing some things, like they only allowed television, for example, at the end of the 80s or something like that, or cars or stuff like that. So he was kind of pressured to allow that. 
And in his answer, he kind of coined this term where he talked about um, uh, happiness, uh, in, uh, interior product of happiness. I don't remember exactly the thing right now. But it was related, it was kind of this war game with uh, economic terms, but based on happiness. His point was that he wasn't so interested in making his country richer or more economically, uh, like, work economically better, but he wanted to make people living in his country uh, more happy. And so this project kind of uh, comes from this, this point, this, this term, and um, what we did is um, happens every year, and uh, the capital of Bhutan, and as I said, there's really high restrictions about uh, technology and stuff like that in, in Bhutan. So the, the kind of connections that we had, like the internet connection that we had, was really restricted. Like we couldn't send like something like video online. Back in 2006, it wasn't so common either to do to, to, like teleconference through video. So we came up with this idea of actually sending smiles from one part of the world to the other. So people will approach the, the installation and when you smile, the installation will detect the smiles and take you a, a picture. And it will send you, uh, it will send a smiles from one part, uh, from one city to the other. So it was kind of uh, creating this way of communication through smiles, right? And people in, in uh, Austria will get uh, smiles from Bhutan and people from Bhutan will get smiles from, from Austria. So it was kind of this non-verbal communication based somehow on, on happiness. There's a group uh, in this university that do research around uh, sound, music, and this is, um, so they, I, at the university for five years, they, they were developing this uh, 
as a research project. The, the idea came from uh, this thing that happens, uh, probably not so much anymore, but uh, with electronic music, the way that you usually see electronic music is usually someone behind a laptop uh, doing stuff that you don't know what's going on, or some DJ, uh, or in general, uh, you cannot see anymore uh, any kind of uh, performance or there's no, like, it kind of loses the visual aspect that music, uh, live music always had, right? Like, if you go to a rock concert, there's someone playing guitar, playing the drums, and it's kind of, uh, it has a visual component to it. Or even if you go to a, a musical, uh, a classic uh, music concert, there's a uh, there's a technologist called Seth Hunter who was in, uh, researching about the possibilities of uh, communicating through the internet, um, how to engage people more when you are communicating through the internet, mostly uh, oriented to um, families where, for example, fathers will be traveling. Um, the idea was to create some kind of virtual world where you can play uh, together even if you are not in